Hello. So let's say that you have a solution containing a compound, but you have no idea how much of that compound is in that solution. In other words, you don't know the concentration of that solute in that solution. One way to find the concentration is to use a spectrophotometer to find the absorbance of that unknown solution and use Beer's law to determine the concentration of the solute. Beer's law states that there's a direct linear relationship between how much light that solution absorbs and its concentration. So how does it work? First, I'm going to diagram what is happening to the light in a spectrophotometer. Then I'm going to illustrate the steps you would need to take to find the concentration of a solute in an unknown solution using Beer's law. Right. So this square here represents a cuvette. A cuvette is the uh, clear container that holds the solution in a spectrophotometer. Now the solution, is, the solute molecules are actually shown here. These little dots are solute molecules. Now the spectrophotometer will cast a very specific amount of light of a very specific wavelength into the solution. These solute molecules will absorb that, that light, but not all of it. Some of that light will actually leave this cuvette and be transmitted as transmittance. The initial light that gets put into the cuvette is called an incident light, and the transmitted light is on the other side. Now, transmittance and absorbance are inversely related, which makes sense. So let's say that we have a high concentration of our solute here. So there's lots of molecules available. When you put in that light, all these molecules are going to be absorbing the light. And so there's going to be only a little bit of light remaining that, that leaves as transmittance. Whereas if there was a concentration that only had a, like if you only had a very small concentration of these solutes, there's only going to be a few of these solute molecules in the solution, so that when you put the light into the cuvette, only a little bit of the light is absorbed by those few solute molecules, and then the rest of the light is transmitted out as transmittance. And so if you have a high transmittance, that means you have a low absorption. If you have a low transmittance, that means you have a high absorption. Now, transmittance is calculated by taking the transmitted light and dividing it by the incident light, i.e. it's a fraction that is of light that is transmitted. Now, the absorbance is found by taking the negative log of your transmittance. Now, if I were going to use a diagram to explain why it is possible to measure the concentration of a solute using a spectrophotometer, this is the diagram that I would use. However, I find that this is kind of an incomplete explanation of how Beer's Law works because it actually doesn't explain concentration at all. And so if you, in order to include concentration into our explanation here, you actually have to look at this linear relationship. Now, Beer's Law states that the absorbance is going to be equal to the molar absorption uh, coefficient times the path length times the concentration. Now, um, the path length is always kept at one, one centimeter. And so if you were going to look at this as a linear relationship, i.e. as a y equals mx plus b relationship, then your y uh, would be your absorbance, uh, your x would be your concentration, and then your slope is gonna be your molar absorption coefficient. Um, the reason why it's not both the molar absorption coefficient and your path length is because your path length is always one, and one times anything is going to equal that thing. And so, um, you know, you, you would be able to um, actually plot this and create this curve called a standard curve or a calibration curve. Now your B or your Y intercept is zero, which also makes sense. And it makes sense because if your concentration is zero, right, which it is at the Y intercept, your concentration is zero, then there's nothing there to absorb the light. And if there's nothing there to absorb the light, then your absorbance should also be zero. Um, and if any absorbance is there, it's actually due to something other than your solute, and so it should be blinked. Um, and so you should be able to calibrate and make this y-intercept zero. Now, in order to actually utilize this 
um, and create this curve, you're going to first need to create a series of dilutions of known concentrations, which means that in a lab, you're going to have to take your desired concentration, I mean, your desired solute and make a solution of it that you know the concentration of. Then you can take that solution and make dilutions um, in a way that you know the concentration of each of your solutions. Now, I just put these concentrations here as an example. Um, they don't have to be equally spaced. Um, you can actually use any number of um, dilutions that you want, as long as they're, they're spaced, um, they're not too uh, diluted and they're not too concentrated. Um, so then after you have these different concentrations, um, that you've made, uh, that you know the concentration of, then you're going to take the absorbance of these dilutions. And so let's say that the absorbance, um, just for our example here, is as follows. Um, then after you do that, after you take the absorbance of each of, each of your dilutions, then you're going to actually have to graph, um, you're going to have to graph your data. And so if we graph our data here, Then at concentration of one micromolar, you're going to have one micromolar. Your absorbance is 0.5. So then we're going to graph at one micromolar a 0.5 absorption. And then at two micromolar, it's 1.0. At three micromolar, it's 1.5. At four micromolar, it's 2.0. At five micromolar, it's 2.5. Now, when you do this in a lab, it's very rare that you're ever going to find um, find a line that looks this good. Um, and so it's going to be really difficult to do this on paper. Usually what you would do is you would take an Excel spreadsheet and um, insert in um, your concentration as your, um, as your uh, X variable and your uh, absorbance as your Y. And um, then you would uh, create a line and then you would find um, a tread line or a line of best fit. So that's what we're doing here. We're putting in a tread line or a line of best fit. And then what we're actually able to do then is take our unknown solution and find its absorbance. So we'll take some of that solution, put it in a cuvette, find the absorbance in a spectrophotometer. Then let's say that our unknown absorbance that we found with our spectrophotometer was 1.75. Right. If we found that, then we would be able to plot it on our graph. And if we plot it on our graph over here, we're going to find that 1.75 is roughly here. And then we're going to move over to where it is on our line, which is right here. And that would be our unknown. Um, our unknown corresponding concentration then would be right here. Right which is uh, 3.5. Uh, so 3.5, right? And so that means that our unknown concentration is 3.5 micromolar. All right, well, I hope that helped. Thanks.